One, two, three, one, two, three. That's where we are tonight. We're possibly dancing a waltz or maybe just giving a mic check. I'm not sure. Hope you're having a good 12, 31, 23. Good evening. I'm Joey. Thanks for stopping by Midwest Sportsnet on this Sunday night, the final night of the year in 2023. And listen, this is what we do here on Midwest Sportsnet. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Tonight, we're going to be talking about some small college teams, some you might have thought about this year, some you may not have thought about for months, but these are some of the best teams in college athletics. And really, honestly, you could take that moniker of small college off of many of these teams. They're just the best. They're the best at what they're doing right now. And they had another great season in 2023. Many of the teams we're going to talk about tonight uh, have been dominant teams for a long time. Some of them, however, winning just their first national championship for the program in 2023. And so we want to mention a few of those teams tonight. And by the way, if you're watching this live, uh, I always encourage everyone, let us know from where you're watching in the live chat. Even if you're watching this on demand and, and you're getting the replay here, let us know in the comment section from where you're watching. But also tonight, maybe you have a team that you think was one of the top teams in the country in 2023. Hope that we get to your team. But if we didn't, let us know who you think one of the top teams in the country for 2023 should be. So let's go ahead and get started again. We're, and we're not going to go to midnight tonight. I'm going to watch the ball drop with my kids here at uh, uh, in Studio B, where we're watching here at Midwest Sportsnet. But uh, maybe we can spend a few, a few minutes more here tonight. All right, let's start with, how about some baseball? Going to some baseball. We'll go with Division Two here, and we will go with the national champions in Division Two, the Angelo State Rams. First national championship for the program. The Rams went 56 and nine in 2023. That's not only a program record; it's a Lone Star Conference record for wins in a season. Won 14 of 15 games throughout May and June of 2023. It culminated in a national championship win, a 6-5 win, by the way, over Rollins. Uh, nine losses on the season. Three of those nine, by the way, to, were to conference opponent uh, and conference rival in UT Tyler, and, and a solid program there, too, top five program, too. 56 wins, great season. Cade Bragg, the pitcher for the team, was a Division II Pitcher of the Year. Nice national honor. The Lone Star Conference Male Athlete of the Year as well. Went 15-1, and one, had two saves, 1.20 ERA for the season, and he was drafted by the Twins along the way. Fellow pitcher Aaron Munson also drafted following the season. He was uh, drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays. And so one of our top teams in the country, small college teams, and again, you can take that small off there. Angelo State, the Angelo State baseball team, national champions, in 2023 let's move from baseball over to basketball how about the ashland women's basketball program and what a dominant program that has been over the last decade especially by i would say just uh, for an 11 year stretch three national championships including one in 2023 and another undefeated season in 2023 start to finish Coach Kerry Pickens, part of all three national championships. And uh, this is a, a really interesting honor, and she's one of only two people to have done this, played for a national championship, won a national championship as an assistant coach, and then won as a head coach as well. So congratulations to her for that. Uh, the winning streak went to 45 games. If you go ahead and go on into 23-24, that was snapped a couple of weeks ago. But still, fantastic season. Division II Women's Bas Basketball National Champions. Annie Roshak, who was the tournament most outstanding player, just also another thing that's happened in the last couple of weeks, passed the 2,000 mark, 2000 point mark in career scoring. So congratulations to her for that. And this is, you, you, I, I mentioned dominance and what things have been. How about this for a dominant program? In the last 12 seasons, Ashland has a winning percentage of 902, 90.2% of the games they played in a 12-year stretch, they've won. That's that's phenomenal. And so you could, uh, lots to be said, not only for one of the teams of the year in 2023, but also one of the teams of the decade. And I guess that spans in uh, the, the 20-teens and now the 2020s. 
and I wonder how they'll, they'll play out. Hopefully we'll still be doing this channel in, in 2029, maybe 2030, and we'll come back and, and look over our teams of the decade at that point in time. But props to Ashland, the women's basketball team, Division II national champions in 2023. How about the College of Idaho men's basketball team? And it's the second national championship for the College of Idaho Yotes. Been a few years, though, since they've done it before. Lost the season opener, and then Coach Colby Blaine's team won the next 36 games. <clears throat> Almost start to finish. You can pretty much say start to finish there. 36-1 and one on the year. And the season pretty much nearly bookended with OUAZ. As a matter of fact, the... Next to the first game was Ottawa, Arizona. The next to the last game was Ottawa, Arizona. Wins both times. And I remember during the, the run and, and, of course, those Fab Four games, we had an opportunity, by the way, to visit with Coach Blaine here on the channel. You could look that up. Please check out that video as well. And we'll try to put the link to that in the description. But one in the Fab Four, and that was hanging on. They they did what they did all season long. would get out to a... A great start, and then teams would come back. It happened in the semifinal game in the Fab Four, 173-72, and then 173-71 in the national championship game over Indiana Tech. College of Idaho, the Oats men bas men's basketball team, 36-1, and one of our teams of the year. We stay in the NAI now as uh, we uh, look over to Georgia Gwinnett. And... This is uh, not just one team, but two teams. And we'll talk about both of them at once now. Two teams uh, as our top teams. I guess it's the program. And, and maybe one solid program because they are coached by one person. Hannah Keeling, who stepped in to take over the men's and women's head coach position. She's been an assistant coach with the program before. Stepped away from Georgia Gwinnett for a while. Came back. Took over for Chase Hodges, who had started the program, and led it for many, many years. And we're talking about, you want to talk about dominance. Here's dominance. The women's national champions in 2023, the seventh consecutive national championship for the women's tennis team, and then the men's national champions as well in 2023, the ninth consecutive national championship for the men's tennis team. And just uh, did not skip a beat. When Coach Keeling stepped in for Coach Hodges, and, and you have to think about Coach Hodges, who, by the way, still is uh, an advisor for the program, but what a, uh, an amazing run he had and to get someone else to step in. And Coach Keeling just, uh, it, again, hadn't, haven't missed a beat there. The men's team did lose once during the regular season. Both the women's teams and the men's teams lost once during the regular season. And for the men's team, it was the first time to have a loss during the regular season since 2015. So uh, quite a run, and it continues on in 2023. Georgia Gwinnett's tennis teams, uh, part of our top teams in 2023. Let's move over from tennis to wrestling now. And we've talked about Grandview Wrestling a number of times here on Midwest Sportsnet. We talk about Grandview Wrestling once again, the 11th national championship for the team in 12 years, I yeah, had that little hiccup to life, uh, the uh, the Running Eagles back in 2021. By the way, life just continues to have a great program too, but going up against Grandview all these years, 11th national championship, that was the team national championship. And then you get to talk about the duels, the 11th consecutive year to win the duels national championship. And the streak is alive, I believe, for duels, not only in the championship realm, but just regular season. It's been going on for nearly a decade now. Don't have the number on that. If you do have the number, let me know in the comments, please. But the Grandview Vikings wrestling program under coach Nick Mitchell, national coach of the year. Once again, this was also something that was really pretty cool for the Vikings wrestling this season is that in the conference tournament, the conference championship for Grandview the Vikings won every single weight class, dominated in the Hart Conference in wrestling. So uh, a fantastic run that continues now for Grandview, one of our top teams in 2023. We move 
from the NAI back over to Division II, and we get a chance to talk about football. First of uh, two football teams here on our list tonight, the Harding Bisons. And yes, I do know how, how to pronounce that, and if you are not a not familiar with the Bisons, it is in fact the Bisons from the Great American Conference. I know there are plenty of Bison that are team logos. Another team actually within the Great American Conference has Bison as its logo as well. But the Bisons from Harding in Searcy, Arkansas, winning the football program's first national championship. They did it just a couple of weeks ago in Texas, a big-time win over Colorado School of Mines. Blake De La Cruz, 27 carries, 212 rushing yards on the day in the championship. Braden Jay, 11 carries, 161 rushing yards, three touchdowns, by the way, as Harding did what it does all the time, ran the ball. This is a dominant ground game from the Bisons. And you look back and you think, well, man, has it? it's probably been a while since a team that runs the ball like this has won a national championship. And, and honestly, I, I think you have to go back to the teams under Barry Switzer with the Oklahoma Sooners that went, ran that option for years and years and years, won national championships for the OU Sooners. Harding has shown it can be done in 2023. 6,163 rush, or excuse me, 61 61, 6,161 rushing yards on the season. That's a phenomenal number, well more than 400 yards per game as the Bisons went 15 and 0. And Coach Paul Simmons, I believe, named as the National Sports Person of the Year in the state of Arkansas and just a, a great program. Congratulations, by the way, to, to Harding for that uh, first national championship, I believe, for the Great American Conference as well. So uh, props to them for doing that. Conference has been around for 12, now into its 13th year. So there we go. All right, let's move on. Let's go from football over to volleyball. Indiana Wesleyan, one of our top teams for 2023, and again, rightfully so, another undefeated team. Few more games played in volleyball than in football, as there are 38 matches that the Wildcats not only played but won over the course of the season. So many of them were shutouts, few four set matches, and just a couple of five set matches. And that was near the end of the season. And that included the national championship match over the number one team in the country. It went five, but Indiana Wesleyan came away with the win. We had a great opportunity to visit with Coach Motes. Uh, Ava Joldersma, Abby Porter as well here on the channel. Please take the opportunity to look that up. We'll try to put that in the description as well just a little bit later so that you can see that. Coach Motes, National Coach of the Year. She took over in 2002, her 22nd season with the program. Four All-Americans on this team, uh, which, by the way, included Joldersma and Porter too. Indiana Wesleyan, one of our top sports teams in the country in college sports in 2023. Told you there were a couple of football teams here on our list, and here's one of them right now. Here's the other one, as a matter of fact, and a team that ran the ball quite well in the championship. Now, maybe not the same ground attack that what Harding had, but the Kaiser Seahawks come back, and after coming up just short in the national championship game in 2022, in the rematch over, by the way, Northwestern once again, back-to-back -back teams that had to face Northwestern in the championship and came away with victories. I guess I could give it, you should give it at uh, the very least a shout out to Northwestern, whose football and volleyball teams both played for a national championship in 2023. Anyway, we're with Kaiser right now. First national championship. And consider this, it's just the sixth season of football for Kaiser. Coach Doug Sosha, an incredible coach, uh, coach of the year, in many ways, and he uh, led his team to a 12 and 2 record in 2023. Won a rematch in the title games, lost only one NAI school over the course of the last two years. Been a couple of losses on the record, but playing against Division II and Division I NCAA pro programs during that season in the regular season, but made another great run through the playoffs and culminated this season with a championship. A couple of things to look at here, even in this. Jaden Meisinger, and if you've watched the channel that much, you know we talk about Meisinger. We've been talking about him since the summer. 
He did not disappoint this year. Saved his best for last. 22 carries for 261 yards in a championship game. And that started off with a 75-yard touchdown to open not only the uh, the game, but the scoring. And uh, Justin Wake, by the way, a shout-out to him, too, did not start until the championship game. Had played in sparing moments over the course of 2023. Prior to that, had not played, did not register time at all. DNP, CD, you know how that all goes down in basketball. Well, he hadn't seen the field, at least in meaningful action, since 2019 prior to a few minutes this year, and he led his team to a championship game in that title contest. So uh, props to Justin Wake for that. What an, what an amazing story that was. And again, what you could say for not only Coach Socia, but the entire team in being able to come away with that championship. A couple of more teams that we want to talk about tonight here. Thanks for watching. Please uh, let us know from where you are watching. And are we getting to a team that you think should be in our top list? How about Nova Southeastern? Division II's men's basketball champions in 2023. Fantastic run, 36-0. Another undefeated team in Division II. We talked about, of course, Ashland. Well, Nova Southeastern gets it done on the men's side. A championship win, 111-101. That is an NCAA Division II record for scoring in a title contest. And you have to put that many points on the board to beat West Liberty. And that's exactly what they did. 111 to 101. The co most outstanding players are Jay Sunahara and Will Yoakum for Nova Southeastern. The Sharks come away with the victory there. Most outstanding player. I, I know that uh, I know I'm I'm old school enough to still want to say MVP instead of MOP. I've already said MOP a couple of times in this one. I remember when it was MVP, and I I guess I don't know. I, I still want to say MVP, and I think the two are not always the same, but sometimes they do overlap, and I think they, they could be thought of as, as the same. But anyway, most outstanding players in that tournament. And I think one of the biggest things to be of note here is the fact that Will Yoakum came over after having played at West Liberty prior to transferring to Nova Southeastern and in the championship game, has to play against his old team to go ahead and, and uh, complete the, the title, the undefeated season, and the run in the championship. So a shout-out to the Sharks of Nova Southeastern, to uh, Yokum Sunahara and the entire team. And one more we have here listed as we move over, uh, back over to the NAIA here and talk about Southern Oregon, the Raiders softball team, third national championship in four seasons, Kayla Williams in the circle, the entire World Series, 23 innings she spent in the circle for Southern Oregon and picked up the wins for the Raiders all the way through. You've got Williams in there. You have the defending National Player of the Year in Riley Donovan, who has played so well over the course of the season. She gets it done once again. By the way, three players that hit better than 400 for your year. You talk about Donovan, 491. That is an amazing number. Williams hit 451 uh, with all of her work in the circle over the course of the season. And Deja Acosta hit 410. Acosta and Donovan, all Americans this year. And Jessica Pistol, uh, the coach of the year and a champion of character in her conference as well. So a whole lot to be said there for Southern Oregon. Oregon and the softball team. So a shout out to these teams, props to them for their wins, their victories over the course of the season. And what do you think? Were those the teams that you might've thought would have been top teams in 2023? Maybe you have a team that you think should be mentioned along with these teams as well. And let's run down there one more time, see if we can get those graphics up there one more time. If you're just tuning in, Angelo State's baseball team, Ashland, the women's basketball team for the Eagles. The College of Idaho, Yotes, the men's basketball team with a championship. Georgia Gwinnett, both women's and men's tennis teams. Grandview Wrestling, dominant as always. The Harding Bisons with their first ever football national championship. Indiana Wesleyan's volleyball. Kaiser with a championship in football. Nova Southeastern in men's basketball and Southern Oregon the Raiders in softball. 
It's been a great 2023. We've enjoyed talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond right here. And I encourage you to come back. Please come back to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, please give us a watch and enjoy the videos here throughout 2024. We have not only a bunch of live streams that are on the way in front of us, but we have some great videos coming up too and some uh, strong interviews with a lot of folks throughout the country. I'm excited about what January has to bring and I would just really appreciate it if you'd stop by the channel and, and enjoy the time with us as well. So for all of you that have watched live streams over the course of 23, thank you very much. Please continue to watch them. If you're new to the channel, we invite you on board. And for everyone else, just want to say God bless you. Enjoy 2024. As always, it will bring challenges that are all its own. A new calendar about ready to head into, but I just encourage you, that you uh, that you walk in love, that you uh, do not walk in fear, and that you have wisdom in what you do. All right, God bless you all. Thanks again for watching. Have a great night, and Happy New Year 2024.